guys, this is the first video in Unit 5. This is the first mathematical unit and it can be kind of uh, overwhelming and so I want to make sure that we really kind of break this up and talk about exactly how to enter things in your calculator. So for this one, we are going to be working on atomic mass and so we're really just going to be focusing right here. Uh, we dealt a lot with mass uh, numbers and when we were talking about isotopes and now we're going to kind of continue into the atomic mass and so we're going to look at how the atomic mass is reported on the periodic table, why it's reported the way it is, and just how to calculate that. So when we were dealing with isotopes we talked about mass number, the number of protons, the number of neutrons, and that's great it's a whole number it's you know easy to deal with the problem with that is it is not um, exactly the best measurement um, to use because we have so many different isotopes per element um, and so for example carbon has carbon 12 carbon 13 and carbon 14 there are other elements that have five or more isotopes it's just too, too much to keep track of. And so the atomic mass that we use isn't the average of the mass numbers. It is kind of like an average except it takes into account the relative abundance of each mass number or each isotope. And so first and foremost don't get overwhelmed. Relative abundance which I abbreviate as RA is just the percent divided by 100. I don't know why this is over here. Um, and so if I say 97 percent, relative abundance is 97 divided by 100 is 0 0.97 relative abundance. It's going to be some decimal less than one. Okay. Now what we're, we're going to do is we're going to take the relative abundance of each isotope and then multiply it by the mass number. And then we're just going to do that. So if there's three isotopes, we're going to multiply the relative abundance of the, is of the first isotope by its mass number. Add that to the relative abundance times the mass number of the second isotope, and so on and so on. And it ends up being a little bit better than what you th might think right now. So here, um, before we really do the math, remember that as we are counting, it is the same as when we were counting with uh, mass numbers, we are going to assume a standard. So, you know, a proton doesn't really have a mass of one, but we're assuming a standard because that makes our life easy. Same thing happens here. We're using that same standard here where we assume carbon 12 is assumed to have a mass of exactly 12 AMU. Proton is a one, neutron is a one, and so on. Now, in all honesty, that's not exactly accurate, but for our purposes, whole number means mass number. Mass with decimal place is usually going to mean atomic mass instead. So let's look at this really quick. Um, now, so we have carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. Yeah, I know, go away. Um, this is not, we don't report carbon 12 or 13 or 14 as the mass on the periodic table. It's usually 12.07, uh, excuse me, no, 12.01 or um, like hydrogen is 1.00007, something like that. Um, and so we have to figure out how to find these numbers. Now, let's look at magnesium. Magnesium has three isotopes and because I typically like things to be simple, I'm going to make a list because I just, I, I would worry that I'm going to lose track of myself, okay? So ma magnesium 24 is present 78.99% of the time. Magnesium 25 is present 10% of the time. And magnesium 26 is present 11.01% of the time. So I already have these corresponding numbers. Okay? Now our formula is that the atomic mass 
is equal to the relative of, oh, I'm sorry, it's the sum of all of them, which is this huge sigma, but it's the relative abundance of the first isotope times its mass number plus the relative abundance of the second isotope times its mass number plus the relative abundance of the third isotope times its mass number. I guess I should do an X to be consistent, A3. Now because I have these written out, I can pretty quickly decide what my relative abundances are. Okay, so this is my A, these are my mass numbers. This is percent. We don't really want percent, we want relative abundance, which is just percent divided by 100. So if we divide this by 100, we get 0 0.7899. Divide this by 100, you get 0 0.1000. Divide this by 100, and we get 0 0.11. 01. Okay, so now I have my relative abundance and my mass number here. And so I can go ahead and just plug them in. So the first one is 0 0.7899 times 24 plus 0 0.1000 times 25 plus 0 0.1101 times 26. Now in your calculator guys, it should not, it, it should, if you enter this all at once, you shouldn't need parentheses. It should do order of operations for you. However, I don't trust my calculator and so just to make sure, I usually do parentheses and around the individual pieces um, because otherwise what will happen is it will take this and divide and multiply by 24. Then you add this and multiply the whole thing by 25. That's not what you want. So you need to kind of specify. So practice this with the calculator you're going to use on the exam to make sure you know it's going to work the way you want. Um, you can try it with parentheses, without parentheses, either way, but make sure that you know it is going to do exactly what you think it should do um, and that you're getting the same answers as I am. And so if it's doing exactly what it should, you should get something like 24.32 grams per mole. Oops. Now on the periodic table this is not exactly what we see. I think we see 24.0 or 20, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, 24.30 or 24.31. Um, it really depends on rounding and because I totally just took these numbers and kind of modified them a little bit, we're going to be off by 0.01. To me, if this last digit right here is off by one or two, you still have the right answer. It's not a, it's a matter of rounding, not a matter of um, true mistake. And even your homework quizzes will accept a tolerance of usually 2 to 3 percent. So copper has two isotopes. Copper 63 is present 69.17 percent of the time. And if the atomic mass of copper is 63.546 on the periodic table, find the mass number of the other one. Make sure you're hitting pause and trying this on your own before you listen to me. Um, but this is just another way of really kind of getting you comfortable with algebra again. And so to me, I kind of like to write everything out and see what I have and what I'm missing. Okay. And so we know the whole formula is the atomic mass. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use this nice title right here is equal to the sum of the relative abundance of the first isotope times its mass number plus the relative abundance of the second isotope multiplied by its mass number. Now if we look at the question, what do we have? Well, we have copper 63, so we know that this is 63. 
and it's present 69.17 percent of the time. So if you wanted to you could go ahead and divide this by 100 here. You could also write it up here 0.17 over 100 that way. Whatever way makes you more comfortable. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say down here what, what is my relative abundance. 69.17 percent. This is for that isotope. Divided by 100 means my relative abundance is 0 0.6917. We don't have the other isotope, uh, its mass. Um, in fact, it doesn't even really specify the relative abundance or the percent here, but we can find that. Let's plug in what else we know. So this is 63.546. Now let's go over here. We've got two variables here. That's a problem. But if there's only two isotopes, those two things have to, it has to be one or the other 100% of the time. You can't say, you know, if you go to the, the, I don't know, Dairy Queen maybe, and they have chocolate and vanilla and nothing else, and you say, I want strawberry, they're just going to look at you like you're crazy. It's either chocolate or vanilla. You don't, there's nothing else. So 100% of the time, you have one of two things. Let's go with purple. So to find the relative abundance of the this guy, we know that 69% of the time it was the one, which means the rest of the time it has to be the other. And so to find that we can just subtract 69.17% from 100 to find that the other isotope is present 30.83%. And if we wanted to, we could go ahead and convert that to a relative abundance, which we need to do. It's going to be 0 0.3083. And so I'm going to come up here and type in 0 0.3083 times A. Now at this point, we have all but this, this variable. So we can go ahead and plug it in. Now depending on where you have um, your, have taken math before, how long it has been, what state you were in. Guys, the way that you solve these types of problems is going to vary and that's okay. Um, if you don't like it the way I do it, that's fine. Do it your way. As long as you are getting the right answer, I don't care. I mean, I, I care that you're getting the right answer. I don't care how you solve it. Okay. Now, things to watch out for. When you are doing this, make sure you are specifying order of operations. So you may need your parentheses here. Also make sure that you are not rounding. Don't round until the very end. Carry it out to, you know, four or five decimal places. Um, well, or four or five numbers. Let's say four or five numbers. See, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, carry it out four or five numbers, okay? Um, now, I typically like simple math, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for what I can before I move anything. Now, just to make our life easier, I'm going to go ahead and erase this stuff at the bottom, just because I'm going to need that space in a second. Okay. Now, if I plug this into the calculator right now, what we would have is 63.546 is equal to, and then I'm going to enter that, that 0 0.6917 times 63, just because I would rather look at one number here than all of them. 43.577, and I'll go all the way out to one. And then that's plus 0.3083a. Now, again, I typically like things to be easy, so I'm going to solve what I can now. The first thing I want to do is go ahead and get rid of this 43. Let's put all of our numbers on one side. 
So I'm going to subtract 43.5771 from both sides. And so what that's going to do, 63.546 minus 43.5771, I'm just triple checking my math here, gives us 19.9689 is equal to 0.3083a. Now at that point, we can divide both sides by this 0.3083. Okay, so that's going to cancel here and we're going to be left with that 19.96 and so on divided by 0 0.3083. And so our mass number ends up being 64.77. A uh, mass number is supposed to be a whole number so this should really probably round to about 65. Now in your quizzes though guys, it's going to specify. Does it want it does it want you to answer to as a whole number? Does it want you to answer to two decimal places? Just make sure you're reading your your directions, okay? This to me is probably the hardest part of this um this unit. The math is not always pretty, but it is important. It's kind of like if you go to the the grocery store and you need to get if you've ever tried to buy like a bell pepper for a recipe, um, specifically red bell peppers, it's really interesting to me because, you know, green bell peppers are like, you know, what, 10 for a dollar, but the red ones are $5 for one. And so if you're a cheapskate like me, you may sit there and go through every red pepper in the bin to try and find the biggest one. And that's because you want to get the most bang for your buck. Um, now, the point of this is not all atoms are the same size, okay? And while we're taking into account a relative abundance here, I just want to show you how they get this. Now, I'm not going to test you on mass spectrom spectrometry. I just don't think that you need to know it. However, um, it is an important topic because you guys are in Virginia, and this is a huge boost for Virginia. So um, the way they do this is they look at, um, well, consider if you were going to throw a baseball. In class, I always say, you know, if I wanted to throw a baseball at the door, not only would it hit the door, it'd probably go out the glass window. And, um, you know, then I'd get in trouble. But if I were to throw a bowling ball, so, you know, if I threw a baseball, it would go, bam, through the door. If I tried to throw this big bowling ball though, what's going to happen is just like at the bowling alley, it's going to go like this and then it's going to drop. Okay? And so heavier objects fall before, it, you know, gravity has a bigger pull. And so the idea here is just like with bowling balls and baseballs, you can have those mass numbers are going to have different sizes. And so you can take a sample and really truly, um, just burn it, you know, um, completely vaporize it and throw it through a detector. Now, the heavier the object, now this is actually upside down because this is, you know, the floor. The heavier the object, the more it's going to fall. And so you can kind of tell on your detector where it hits what isotope it is. And then you can kind of count those hits to see the relative abundance, like how many times did this one hit? How many times did that one hit? And so you can kind of determine how much you have. Now, atomic absorption was used for a really, really long time. Um, but mass spec has only been around generally briefly. Um, and, you know, in... I don't know, was it the 80s or 90s? John Finn um, came up with this idea that, you know, we didn't have to just do atoms. We could actually do this with entire samples. Look at proteins and chemical markers for diseases and things this way. And he was laughed at for a really long time because they told him it was going to be like getting an elephant to fly. And anyway, he, um, he stuck with it. He kept doing his research. The Ivy League school that he was at revoked his funding. I won't tell you which school it was. They revoked his funding and kind of took away his lab. 
So at that point, um, VCU over in Richmond kind of, you know, were like, oh, come here, come here, come here. You can have whatever you want. And they gave him this really great lap space. They really gave him some prestige, you know. But a couple years after he came to VCU, he ended up getting the Nobel Prize for doing what everybody else said was going to be impossible and wasn't going to be useful. And now it's used pretty often. So yay him. Um, I think that was in 2004, 2000 and, 2004 plus or minus a year is when he got the Nobel Prize. So yay, Virginia. So from this video, guys, you should be able to calculate the atomic mass or find the mass number of one of the isotopes.